Hello, my soccer universe. What a remarkable round of 16 evening it was yesterday. Really entertaining stuff. We had almost a big favorite going out of the tournament and there was an upset in the cards in the other game as well for a short while. Although, let's be honest, it was never really there. But it was great stuff. And I would argue that the more lopsided game was more entertaining because both teams had a plan of what to do. There were also some eerie similarities between the two games because in both games, the outsider took the lead. In both games, the outsider early in the second half took a shot from the halfway line, just missing it, which really would have given a blow to the favorite there. However, in the end, the favorites prevail, but the biggest difference was that one favorite was absolutely brilliant and fully deserved their win. That's these guys. And the other one had the great escape, and that is England who seemingly had no plan and just their superstars bailed them out big time. This was the great escape for England. Before we talk about these two games though, Jersey matchup bingo as always. Yeah, this one was easy, got everything right. I would have loved to see Georgia don their black shirts, but that was never in there. So, Jersey matchup bingo done. Let's move on to Gelsenkirchen. Where Gareth Southgate surprised us with one change to the lineup, Kobe Menu starting, okay, yeah, no one really found him. England might have controlled possession for most of the time and were mostly playing in front of the Slovak half, but Slovakia played as a team. And while I was very down on Slovakia ahead of the tournament, I have to say I've grown to, onto the Slovakia side. They look sturdy, David Lobotka and Duda, a very capable midfield, and up front with Schranz, a player who is now the joint top scorer. So a really well worked team. Actually, I hear some voices from Italy that Calzona might actually be much better suited to be an Italian manager than, for instance, Spalletti, who needs the club game. But that's beside the point we're talking about England against Slovakia here. Another thing that really stood out is that early on, the Turkish referee gave a whole lot of yellow cards. And at one point, especially when Bellingham got his yellow card for a tripping card, there was no doubt that this should have been a yellow card. But he was not the captain and he kept talking to the referee and a different referee would have said give him a second yellow card and set him off. Not that I say this is right. I know he's frustrated, but he needs to keep that in check. And at the same time already, we had a few dangerous forays of the Slovaks into the England half. And one of those then led to the go-ahead goal, where Strelitz uh, pass finds Schranz, who is a little bit tripped up, I think by Stones, but in the falling move, nicely puts it past Jordan Pickford. And I really have to say, at that point, the lead was overall deserved. Yes, again, England controlled possession and played mostly around the Slovak block. However, they had no idea of how to break that one down. And whenever the Slovakia came onto the English goal, it was a lot more danger. And then in the second half, a whole lot more planlessness by the English. Yes, seemingly Foden scored the equalizer. It was chalked off because there was an offside in the builder play. If that equalizer goes in early in the 50th minute, then I think England will probably win this relatively easy. But then, honestly, Slovakia looked rather comfortable defending. They just needed to stay deep and whatever England tried, they didn't have a recipe. It was also really annoying if you're an England fan. I mean, I was very neutral in, the, in this game, but I wanna see this England team let loose because I think they have a whole lot of promise up there. Yes, Cole Palmer came on, exciting player. Eze then uh, later on came on for Menu, but always some teeny tiny changes, not a wholesale change. Whereas Slovaks at the hour mark made two changes and the more they really made everything to see it out. They had one big chance. There was an errant pass on the halfway line when Strelitz got his foot on it, almost called a Pickford. That is a shot. If that would have gone in, we are absolutely sure that Slovakia would have gone through, but it seemed really that they would have gone through anyway. Rice, I think, with a long range shot hit the post. There was a free header by Kane going wide. That was about it. Slovakia looked comfortable defending. Until it wasn't. When a cross by Guehi comes in and Bellingham overhead kicks it into the net in the 95th minute. And at that moment it was clear, yes, it will go to overtime. But then now Slovakia is broken. Because this was a hammer blow for them. And England just escaped with one terrible form. They were planless. And still 
they have the quality in their squad to score the goal. So I want to put a little bit of a spin on that towards the positive. And I also have to say that Slovakia is a little bit to be blamed that in the end they just tried to see the game out without doing any forays for themselves. They need a little bit more sustained possession at one point in the second half that never came. Just defending it, although it might have just worked, you kind of knew that this may not work as well. And this is where I blame a little bit Calzona where they got it wrong. And then right after the kickoff, there was a free kick where Aza plays the ball into the box. Tony gets his head on it, deflects it onto Kane, who is free there. And it's 2 on England, and there was only one winner there. Yes, Slovakia were then trying, but then England could see it out. And all the timidness by Southgate suddenly paid off because now he had all the substitutes for overtime. And that allowed him to control the game. I mean, even if halftime, he brought off the two goal scorers in Bellingham and Kane. Absolutely crazy. In the end, it all works out for Southgate again. I think if you're an Eagle fan, you probably have to say in Southgate we trust. Although it really, when you look at it, it just does not look right. But he gets it all right in the end. <laughs> this is just the thing that boggles my mind. Well, also boggles my mind, but it's really indicative of the game that when you look at expected goals, Slovakia has a higher expected goals than England. England had only one shot on goal in regulation. They had only two shots on goal overall. Both of them went in. So... <laughs> an unbelievable performance but not in a good way and so England move on into a quarter final against Switzerland a Swiss team that I'm really liking against England unless something finally clicks for England to be seen in a way the matchup between Spain and Georgia and Cologne was even more ludicrous because from the get-go, Spain were just around the opposing box. It was like a handball game. It was so funny how they create chances, but they miss or Mamadashvili actually saved, so you had the great goalkeeper there. Georgia, having two days less to prepare for, for this game, also were kind of hanging back a lot, but they had everything. They had the spirit, they had some class players up front, and they had a great goalkeeper. So you thought that the recipe for an upset is there. And especially it was there when then Kabatate run on the side, put it across, and there are five Spaniards in the box. And there's Quicha Quaraskelia in there. A single striker. The ball doesn't even find him because Lenormand doesn't get him body turned well, and from his hip it goes into the net. I laughed out so loud. I mean, I had to write to my brothers who are both Spain fans, one of them living in Spain currently, and I said, you know, Spain will win this one, but this is just crazy. I'm laughing so hard. One guy in the box, one counter-attack, and Georgia is leading 1-0. This rattled Spain a little bit, because then Georgia was a little bit more adventurous themselves as well, and had a few counter-attacks. If this goes 2-0, I'm not sure where this ends up. I still think that Spain would have won it even with a 2-0 deficit. But boy, this was the comedic moment for me of the evening. I, I laughed so hard after that, because you just couldn't believe that one. As I said, Spain had to compose themselves, but in the end, they kept on going. They were already controlling this game so much, it was just a matter of time. What Yamin Lamal and Nico Williams are doing is just brilliant stuff. They always have the good passing, they have the technical players, they work well as a team, and now they add some oomph, they put in the crosses, they put in the runs, all the stuff that they did not do under the Tiki Taka style, which was great when it worked, but, you know, it was horrific when it didn't. In the end, uh, Williams' pass finds Rodri at the edge of the, of the box, who just puts it into the corner. It's 1-1, a really nicely worked goal. And everyone knew at this point that it's going one way. However, there was one other, and I'm not sure if it was before or after. I want to say it's before Spain took the lead, that Quicha Kvaskelia has the ball midfield, he's running head down and then takes on the shot. And it almost goes in from midway point of the field. That was really weird. I think that Una Simon was positioned in such a way that it would not have called him out. But for a moment there you thought, ooh, could Georgia strike again? Spirited team, fun team to watch. One of the highlights of this tournament, absolutely. Georgia, I want you in this tournament every single time again. It's so worth it to have Georgia there. However, in the end, we found the right winner. Yamal is fouled. He takes the free kick. Then the ball uh, comes back to him again after it's saved. And from a free kick cross, Ruiz heads it in. It's 2-1 Spain. Only one winner from that point on. And they had a goal disallowed 
would have been an own goal in the 74th minute, but then just, just a minute later, Nico Williams in a run that was very reminiscent of Ronaldinho. Wonderful shot in the internet, makes it 3-1, and Nico Williams had a brilliant game there. He was always a thorn in the side of the Georgians, and then very late on, Dani Olomek makes it 4-1. A score that is very representative of the game because Spain was so dominant. However, again, give credit to Georgia. They made this a fun game. I think Spain had more shots on goal in this game than England had in the entire tournament. Absolute crazy stuff. Spain fully deserving to move on. However, did we see some frailty also? You know, there's always the silver lining for England was that in the end it worked out. It might be here that we see that, you know, this Spain team there has some weaknesses. One of them is clearly finishing. On the other side, the defense, yeah, that doesn't look quite good. And so I'm really excited now that they have to play against Germany. Both teams can hurt each other very well. Both teams have been overall quite good to watch. This is a blockbuster of a quarterfinal, I gotta say. Now, if we look at the projected bracket, we also see that not much has changed. Yes, England moved on, Spain moved on, both of them were favored. Spain is favored over Germany, of course, ever so slightly, despite home field uh, advantage. But they fall into France, who, again, are the highest rated team overall. Performances don't go into the ratings, unfortunately. That would be really fun. But France are favored over Belgium, over Portugal, over Spain, and also over England in a final. And you might see that this French team might put a run together. Much more so than this England team, who of course would have a run via Switzerland and the Netherlands. Today, we have another exciting set of round of 16 fixtures. The big one between France and Belgium. Will France for once show up? Will Belgium for once show up? This one has a whole lot of potential of being a great game. I just fear it might not quite be. And then Portugal-Slovenia sounds one-sided, but this Slovenia team is ace dirty, and I think they've beaten Portugal in a friendly recently. So watch out for that one as well. The winners will play each other in a quarterfinal, of course. Let me know your thoughts on these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!